Howdy, everybody. Here we are, all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. First, though, I want to take a minute to explain just why you should always insist on Horlicks. Just why you should avoid buying one of the cheaper imitations that are being offered in many stores. Here's the difference. Where Horlicks contains only full, rich, cream milk, the imitations are often made with skim milk. That's important because mixed with water alone, the Horlicks makes a rich, nourishing drink. Without the addition of raw milk, it is more easy to digest and much more economical. Then, where Horlicks uses only the best selected malted barley and choicest wheat, these imitations often contain quantities of ordinary sugar and inferior malt powder. And last but not least, only Horlicks has the benefit of the remarkable Horlick process. Many of the cheaper imitations, you should know, are not processed at all. They're simply mixed together by mechanical means. So you can see that in Horlicks, you really get full value for your money. And in addition, you get a product whose quality, flavor, and results have not been equaled for 50 years. Insist on Horlicks at your drugstore. You can get it, you know, in both natural and chocolate flavors. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. In order to make a hero of himself and regain the confidence of his fellow townsmen, Lum arranged to have his old friend Abner kidnapped, a plan Abner reluctantly agreed to. Last night, they left a note on Abner's pillow stating that he had been kidnapped and was being held for a $50 ransom. Today, we find him hiding over at Lum's house, where he's to stay until Lum deems it the proper time to effect his rescue. News of the kidnapping has spread like wildfire. And we find Lum just returning to the house after hearing the affair discussed all over town. Listen. Abner! Hey, Abner! Huh? Where are you? Well, for goodness sake, <laughs> what are you doing up under the dining room table? Well, I never knowed for sure that was you coming in. Well, it's a good thing it was. A body can see you sitting there just as plain as if you're sitting here in the middle of the room. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Well, it's a working Abner. Yeah. Uh, uh, Granny, the whole town's talking about it. Well... That's all you can hear everywhere you go, folks talking about you being kidnapped. Well, I do it all. <laughs> Only thing that sort of steers me now, I'm feared it's working too well. I never seen folks that worked up over anything in my life. Well, have you saw Elizabeth yet? Yeah, I just come from over there. She's mad as a wet setting here. Oh, I know she'd go high in a kite quick as she heard about it. Whenever anybody starts picking on me, why, they got her to deal with, too. Well, I don't think she's mad at the kidnappers about that, though. What she's so mad about is them breaking that window out. Huh? That window you jumped through last night. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I know she'd be mad about that. Uh, what else did she have to say? Well, I never got to talk to her much. There's a big crowd gathered over there looking for clues, and I guess... Uh, uh, looking for who? Clues. Something to give them some idea who the kidnappers was. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. They found the ladder we left propped up again in the house and a bunch of stuff. Ain't no doubt in their mind but what your actual kidnapped, all right. Well. They've got some of the outlandish stories out on you ever here. <laughs> stories? Yeah, Ezra Seastrunk's woman claims she seen a big black car go by her place about 9 o'clock last night and said she could see you sticking your head out the back window. <laughs> back window of the car? Yeah, said they had a handkerchief tied around your mouth to where you couldn't holler and there's about three men in there with shotguns and everything. <laughs> well, now, she must be mistaken about that, Lum, for I don't recollect a thing about riding in no car. Why, well, of course she's mistaken. That's what I say, like Luther Phillips. And Luther claims that he come by your place about 8.30 last night and there was two suspicious-looking characters standing there. Uh, in... Suspicious-looking? What? Characters, men, standing oh. there in your front yard. Said he'd know either one of them if ever he seen them again. Well, I do know. Now, I reckon what they was doing standing there in my yard. That's just it. They wasn't standing there. Oh, sitting down, huh? No, Henry. It's just a mistake. It goes to show how a body's imagination will work at a time like this. Someone even called up from Cherry Hill and said you was saw over there right early this morning. Said you was in a kibbered wagon with a band of gypsies. Well, for the land's sake. <laughs> so they called the sheriff in there at the county seat. He's going to stop them and search the wagon whenever they get in there. Well, that won't do them no good. I'll tell them that right now. Why, of course not. But that's just what we want. The more stories that get started like that, the better off we are. Well. I even started one story myself over there. <laughs> Told them that there was a feller in the filling station at Mount Ida that sold some gasoline to a car right early this morning that had a man tied up in the back seat. And the man wore glasses and chin whiskers like you. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, who was it? Who was it? Yeah, who was the head tied up that way? It wasn't nobody. I told you. I just made the story up out of my head. Oh, oh I see. <laughs> he never had no spectacles or chin whiskers like me at all, huh? No, Abner. He never had nothing. That's well, just the story I told him. 
Just uh, throw them off the track. Oh, yeah. Wait yeah. a minute. What are you fixing to do there? Oh, that was your ring. Well, here, I'll answer it. I want you talking over the telephone. Uh, when I ain't here and that phone rings, just let it ring. Hello? Let it ring like they could see me over the telephone. Lum Edwards, please. You can't see through them little wires. Who? I hear they're going to invent something. Oh, well, how are you, Sister Simpson? We talked to somebody to see them standing there and gather. Yes, Mom, I heard about it. All right, instead of saying I want to talk to him, say I want to see so-and-so. Oh, yes, it's terrible. I never would have thought he'd have did it. Or, uh, it's just hard to believe. See, lots of fellas may have belonged this in the battle stop. They get to see them. Well, I don't guess there's any way of knowing hardly who done it. I'd say just offhand it was a big gang that done it. Call up somebody and say you're coming over. They always talk like they're crazy. Uh, you know, they're holding for ransom. See their face? I bet you stay home at times. Yes, Mom. $50 they're asking for ransom. Oh, there ain't no telling how he's suffering right now. Might be bad sick or something. Oh, because I'm bringing a good price. Yes, Mom. Uh, well, I feel sorry for him. They might have hurt him, you know. No, I'm feeling all right, Mom. Well, I hope they do find him, but it'll take an awful brave man to rescue him from that bunch. Yes, Mom, the man that finds him will be a real hero, and don't you forget it. Now, if I hear anything, Sister Simpson, I'll be sore and let you know. Yeah, let me talk to her, Mom. All right, Sister Simpson, glad you called. Er, yeah. Goodbye, Mom. Oh, <laughs> goodbye. And she was wanting to know about me, huh? Yeah. You notice me using that psychology on her there? No, I never noticed it. Well, that part there when I was telling her that whoever finds you is going to be a hero. I was talking about myself then. Oh. See, I keep telling everybody that, and then when I do find you, it'll just make folks appreciate me that much more. Well, what did you mean there, Mom, when you were telling Sister Simpson about me? Quiet, somebody at the door. Oh. Get back there in the bedroom and hide. Hide? Yeah, crawl in under the bed there or something. Hurry up. And stay there till they leave. <laughs> Come in. Come in. Well, howdy, fellas. Howdy. Yeah, how are you, Lum? Just fine, Dick. Come in, Grandpa. Yeah. Howdy, Lum. Oh, you by yourself? I thought I heard you talking to someone. Why, oh. Uh, <laughs> no, I must have been singing. Yeah, that's what I was doing, singing. Running the scales. Do re me fo so la ti do sit down, fellas. Off a chair there, Grandpa. Yeah, thank you, Lum. Yeah, that is bad about Abner, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, it's a shame. Yeah, we just came by to talk to you about it, Lum. I can't understand it. Why they'd pick out Abner to kidnap. Well, I can't hear. He wouldn't harm a flea. Well, I mean, if they were going to get somebody to hold for a ransom, why, there's several men around town here more able to pay a ransom than he is, like Doc Miller, for instance. Well, I believe that Abner's the man for the job, though, or for the, the best in the kidnap. Have you got any ideas about who, who could have did it, Lum? Well, no, I ain't, Grandpap. That is, nobody could just go lay a finger on, but... If you don't mind oceans on it, I believe it's an organized gang of regular kidnappers that done it. Well, I don't think so, Lum. Looks more like the work of amateurs to me. No, I know they was kidnappers, Richard. Fact is, they no said so. Well, I mean somebody knew at the game, or The job was handled too crudely. Like that ladder they left leaning up against the house there. Well, now, there's one reason I figured it was did by a regular gang. They always use ladders, you know. Well, they didn't need one over there, though, Lum. The window wasn't over three feet off the ground. Well, yeah, but maybe they didn't know that. Well, that's what I say. If it had been an experienced gang, they'd have known what they needed before they went over there. Another thing, all those tracks, footprints outside the window there, they left all kinds of clues. Yeah, we measured them tracks, and if we can just find somebody's shoes to fit them now, we'll know who done it. Well, personal, I don't think you'll ever find them around Pine Ridge. Wouldn't surprise me none if they never struck out for Mexico or Canada or some of them places up in there. No, I don't think so, Lon. I think it's somebody right here in town. And I intend to find out who it is, too. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, yeah. And the fact that they just asked for a $50 ransom would indicate it was amateur. Eh, we ain't gonna get no place sitting around talking about it. Let's get back on over to Abner's place, Richard. The sheriff ought to be there by now. Yeah, yeah, come on, go over there with us, Lon. They were talking about getting up a searching party over there a while ago. Well, I'll be on over there directly. I've got a little work to do around the place here first. Well, we'll see you over after a while, then. All right, fellas. Glad you come by. Do you want me to take a store out again in the morning, Lum? Why, sure. Saturday's our biggest day. Well, I didn't know on account of Abner where you'd want to keep running it or not. Oh, yeah. Ought to do well with it now. Folks feel sorry for Abner and buy more stuff from her. Come on, Grandpa. Yeah, see you over at Abner's in directly, Lum. All right, fellas. Have gone, Lum? Yeah, be quiet. They just now went out the door. What was it they were wanting? Well, nothing in particular. I couldn't figure out just exactly what they did want. I have to sit up here and let on like I'm worried to death about you and no one using the other room all the time. Then this thing ain't working out like I allowed it would. I don't like the idea of them measuring them footprints over there. Measuring what footprints? Why, the footprints that me and you left outside the window there. 
Oh. Oh, man, that's my ring. I'll answer it. Yeah, somebody else ought to talk about the kidnapping, Rick. <laughs> I never know the wash important. <laughs> Hello? This is him. Oh, well, howdy, Esri. Huh? What for? Well, maybe you fellas better go ahead and look for him without me, Esri. I got... Why, sure, he was a friend of mine, but I... Well, I just, uh... Uh-huh. Yeah, I reckon so. What time are you leaving? Well, all right, I'll be over there in a few minutes, then. All right. Goodbye. There's a fine howdy do. What's the matter? Why, I've got to go out with a searching party and walk all over these mountains looking for you when I know all the time you're piled up here in bed at my house sound asleep. Whose idea was this kidnapping business anyway? I don't even... Well, there seems to be a few drawbacks to this kidnapping that Lum apparently overlooked. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Horlicks, the worldwide traveler's aid. I've done quite a bit of flying in my time. In fact, I never go by land where I can take the air. And I'm pretty well used to it by now, of course. But I must say that I still find a flask of Horlicks tablets a mighty handy thing to have along. Many's the time I've handed them around to fellow passengers on flying trips. Now, many people can't take a heavy meal before flying, you know. And Horlicks tablets make fine, sustaining nourishment. Easily digested, too, in case of sickness. Well, my family doesn't go in for flying so much, but we do make a lot of miles a year on the road. And Horlick's tablets certainly are fine for motoring. They ward off that tired and hungry feeling. Keep you feeling refreshed, as Mr. Brickett says. And they don't spoil children's appetites, either. An important thing to remember when you're traveling. Try some of these Horlick's tablets yourself for weekend trips or for that late vacation. Everyone should have a flask along. You can get them, you know, at your druggist in both natural and chocolate flavor. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlick, who now bid you all goodbye until Monday at the same time.